Team Group's T-Force Delta gaming memory modules are available in a wide variety of speeds and capacities and feature full-frame, ultra-wide angle RGB lighting, aluminum heat spreaders, and compatibility with current-gen RGB lighting control software. Right now, Team is hosting the Thanksmas Gaming PC giveaway, where you could win parts for a full desktop PC, including a Ryzen 5 2600X, an RX 570, and Team's T-Force Delta RGB SSD and memory. Click the sponsor link in the description to learn more. Okay everyone, it is finally time. We are finally ready to invest and buy a new computer. There's multiple reasons why now is a good time to do that. One, uh, prices. Prices have come down. Graphics cards you can now buy for reasonable prices. Uh, SSD prices have come way, way down. That's super nice. Even memory prices, not as good as they could be, but much, much better than they were six months or a year ago. So. I'm going to take you through four bonus builds today. This is sort of an extension of my monthly builds series, but these are parts lists. So if you wanna see a tutorial on how to build a computer, check out my most recent how to build a computer video. And if you'd like more builds videos of me actually putting builds together, check out my builds playlist, which I will link down in the description. Now all the builds today share some similarities, but they scale up in price, starting at 400 bucks, then $700, then around $1,100, and finally my best all around system that includes a monitor for 1250. These are all main stream system so I'm not looking at crazy high core counts or really expensive parts. I'm just trying to give you guys parts lists that I would legitimately recommend if I had friends who had 400 bucks or 700 bucks or what have you. I'm not caring too much at all about aesthetics. It's more about performance and then I'm also going to start out by going down sort of some conceptual things about the PC parts in general. So the parts lists include the seven main components for a computer which includes a CPU and you will also need a heatsink fan. Sometimes that's included with the CPU, sometimes you can buy it separately. You also need a graphics card. That is very important. The only way you wouldn't need that is if you have integrated graphics, which the lowest end $400 build has. You're also going to need a motherboard. The socket for the motherboard should match the CPU that you choose. And then the form factor uh, for all of today's builds, we're looking at ATX form factor builds should also match your case. So if you want a smaller case like micro ATX or mini ITX, make sure the motherboard you choose is mini ITX and then also get a case that matches. And then for the most part, you should be able to use the same other components that I'm sharing with you guys today. You also need memory. It's also called RAM, random access memory. The current memory standard is DDR4. So all the systems I'm talking about today use DDR4. And then my recommended memory configuration right now is 16 gigs, two eight gig sticks. So you can run them in dual channel mode. And that is what all of these systems I have put together today are gonna to be using as well. Moving on from there, you will need a case to put everything in. You'll need a power supply to provide power. And then you'll need storage via a SSD. You can also use a hard drive, but I always, always recommend right now, if you're building a new computer, use an SSD at least for your operating system. Other than that, you might need a few other parts. You will need a monitor to plug into, you'll need a keyboard and mouse, you'll need an internet connection and a router. The router is often provided by your internet service provider. And you'll need an operating system such as Windows 10 or Linux. I'm not including these for the most part in the costs of the builds I'm putting together today, except for the final one that does include a monitor. And then for an operating system, if you want Windows 10, uh, check out the video I posted about getting Windows 10 on the cheap, and uh, that will get you off and running without too much expense. Finally, the core components I'm using for all the builds today can be summarized as such. So this is five of the seven items, excluding the CPU and GPU. You can get a solid case for 50 bucks. So that's kind of your starting off standard for a case. You can get a solid power supply for 30 to $50. You can get a motherboard for about 90 to $110. You can get a two by eight gig kit of memory for $100 right now. And for an SSD, you could get a 250 gig one for 30 bucks. You can get a 500 gig one for $55. And then if you need a CPU cooler, you can get that for about $20. So that's kind of your baseline cost. And then beyond that, you'll need a CPU and GPU, which will add significantly to this total in some cases, but this is your starting off point. And if you're shopping for these parts, this is kind of the ballpark price you should be looking at. So starting off with my first build here, which is only $400 features a Ryzen, Ryzen 3 2200G APU, which includes a CPU and a GPU in the same thing. So for this build, we don't need a discrete graphics card. So that list I was showing you that uh, ends up at 300 bucks for the low end, add $100 to that for your Ryzen 3 2200G, and you get a full, fully functional system for about $400. All these parts lists, I am using PC Part Picker to put together, but I'll have links to all the individual parts down in the video's description, as well as the full lists if you wanna check them out. So let's run down this real quickly. Our CPU is a 2200G. I've talked about this APU many times before. It's just a great starting out product because it's only 100 bucks. It's a four core CPU. It doesn't have hyper threading or SMT, so you only get four cores and four threads. 
threads, but that's perfectly adequate for gaming, and it's got integrated Vega 8 graphics. I did a video on this, so check that out if you want to get an idea of what kind of performance you can expect, but for 1080 gaming, this is an excellent, excellent solution. For motherboard, I have the Gigabyte B450 Aorus Elite ATX. This is an AM4 motherboard, and the nice thing about boards that are AM4 on this platform is that you have an upgrade path. You're starting off with a $100 CPU. You could upgrade that to a 6-core or an 8-core in the future via the Ryzen and Ryzen 2 offerings AMD has available. So I love having an upgrade path, and I chose this motherboard not because it's the cheapest, because there are cheaper B450 boards out there, but it's got solid power delivery, a nice feature set, and if you do decide to upgrade this system in the future, then this you won't need to necessarily upgrade your motherboard as well. So for 90 bucks, that's a great choice. I'm using the same memory kit for pretty much every single build today, and that is because it's 100 bucks. It's DDR4-3000, and you do want faster memory if you're going with an AMD build in particular. I recommend 3000 or 3200 speed memory. This kit will work with AMD or Intel setups, including Ryzen setups, and it's only $100, at least for the next four days. So jump on that while you can. 16 gigs, 3000 speed memory for 100 bucks. Again, that's just why I stuck with it for the entire build. For storage, we have a Team L5 Lite. This is just a really basic entry-level SSD, but it's 240 gigs, which is enough for your operating system in some games. You would want to supplement this with another SSD or a hard drive, so bear that in mind for the future. But for 30 bucks, that gets you off and running, and from there, you can choose a case. For a case, there's lots of $50 options. I chose the Phantom 410 because it's on sale right now. This usually costs a bit more, but any $50 full-size ATX case should do you just fine. Of course, there's lots of reviews and stuff you should check out. I like this case because it's got a side panel viewing window. It's got plenty of ventilation. It comes with some built-in fans, so you have airflow right out of the gates. And again, $50, but the case is the place where I would say there's the many, so many different choices you can, you can choose. That's why I'm saying the $50 price is what you want to go for here. Uh, and this is just an example of a case that works for that price. But of course, choose any full-size ATX case that you like the reviews of and like the look of as well. For a power supply, we have a 550 watt 80 plus bronze certified power supply. And again, for most single GPU configurations, this will work just fine. No need to upgrade it. No need to worry about it in the future, and it's 30 bucks with a $20 mail-in rebate from Newegg right now. My requirements for power supplies are one, that they're from a reputable manufacturer. Corsair is definitely that. Two, I like all black cables because uh, we don't like the look of non-all black cable power supplies. And then beyond that, if it's got modularity, that's helpful. And then we do want at least 80 plus bronze certification for efficiency. Uh, you can, of course, upgrade to a gold certified power supply that will save you a little bit in the long run uh, when it comes to your power bill. So these six parts are all you'll need to put this system together. Uh, the Ryzen 3 2200G does include a heatsink fan in there, so no need to worry about that. And $400, I think, is a great starting out price for a very capable 1080 gaming PC. But what if you had maybe just a couple hundred more bucks to spend? Where would you go from there? For that, I have build number two here, which is only $700, but has some significant upgrades. So we've gone from an APU that has integrated graphics to a CPU, but not just any CPU, the eight core Ryzen 7 1700X. So this has eight cores and 16 threads, massive jump up in CPU processing capability from the $100 2200G, and this is only $150. It doesn't come with a heatsink fan though, so I've included the Hyper 212 Evo, which isn't the prettiest, but it gets the job done and it's only 20 bucks. Again, I'm not considering aesthetics very much for these parts lists at all. Beyond that, we have the highly rated and recommended B450 Tomahawk motherboard from uh, MSI, which you can get for $100 to $110. Same kit of memory, same SSD. We've added a GTX 10 66 gig thanks to the glut of inventory that nvidia is suffering through right now you can get these for actually 200 dollars for a 6 gig version of a 1060 that's a great deal there same case and then same power supply as well and that gives our total to 688 dollars and 46 cents if you deal with all the mail and rebates of course so sub 700 dollars for this build and i just i'm so happy that amd has done what they've done with ryzen because an 8 core 16 thread processor for 150 bucks it's just, ah, that's that's so awesome. This is a great deal. Even though it's not second gen Ryzen, like the 2700 and 2700X, uh, it still has a good out of the box frequency, 3.4 gigahertz, and you can overclock it since these are all unlocked for overclocking as well. We gotta have a cooler. So this is the Hyper 212 Evo. I only chose this because it's 20 bucks. There are other coolers you can get that are gonna be a lot prettier than this one. Like there's even a black version of the Hyper 212 Evo, but it's $35, so 20 to 35. I was like, eh, we'll just stick with this one. 
This will get the job done just fine for any Ryzen processor, um, but of course, if you wanna spend an extra 10 or 15 or 20 bucks on something that might cool a little bit better and look a little bit better, then you're totally welcome to do that. That's the beauty of the flexibility of building your own PC. Choose your own parts, spend your money where you want to. The B450 Tomahawk motherboard from MSI I've recommended a few times now. It's just got really solid power delivery for about 100 bucks. So this is a good sort of entry level, but also will take you through to the mid range and even towards the high end if you get a higher end CPU and start dabbling in overclocking. Four DIMM slots so you can expand your memory in the future. Uh, it's got USB 3 and it's even got a couple M.2 slots in there as well. So if you decide to add some high speed storage, you can do that too. And then again, the power delivery on this motherboard is just really solid for the price. So if you get into overclocking, that's something you're going to want to have. Graphics card is the GeForce GTX 1060 6 gig from EVGA. This is basically the least expensive GTX 1060 6 gig that they have on PC Part Picker, but um, being $200 when these were selling for $250 to $300 or more uh, just a few months back is a pretty good price if you ask me. Of course, they ramp up from there if you do want to get something that has a bit better cooling solution since this is the small version that just has the mini cooler on it. But functionally, it's just fine, and it's $200 uh, with a $20 mail-in rebate, so there's my choice for your graphics card. And there is the entire system with the low, low price of sub $700. I think this would be a great system for anyone who wants to get in there, get it put together. Of course, here as well, you'd probably want to add some additional storage beyond the 240 gig SSD, or uh, you could just mix and match some of the parts from these couple higher end builds that I've put together here. Next build is the $1,075 80 build, and this has an 8700K and a GTX 1070. Uh, total price here is $1,074.81. That includes a few mail and rebates. 8700K is my choice right now. If you want to build on the Intel platform and you want a high end CPU, and you don't want to pay way too much money for it, like you'd have to pay for the 9900K right now. The 8700K you can get for 340 bucks. That's still a little bit on the expensive side when you compare it to what AMD can get you for six core processors, but this will overclock. You should be able to get uh, to at least 4.8 to five gigahertz on this CPU without too much trouble. And it's gonna give you better overall gaming performance, just got better single thread performance. So for people who are still into the Intel side of things, that's why I included this build as well. Uh, but again, I paired that up with a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo, Evo just because for 20 bucks you can't beat the price to performance, and you do need an air cooler to go along with the CPU. Beyond that, our motherboard is the EVGA Z374, the win. Uh, this is actually a really solid motherboard from EVGA. It used to go for well over 200 bucks, now on sale for 150. It's got three M.2 slots. It's got surface mounted power and reset buttons, as well as a debug LED. It's got a real solid power power delivery setup as well. Uh, so I think for anyone who just wants a, again a motherboard that's going to get the job done, handle overclocking, get you the most performance out of your 8700K that you want for 150 bucks. I think you're gonna have a hard time getting a much better deal than that. Moving on for storage, I've just upgraded our 240 gig SSD to a 480 gig SSD. Team on their L5 Lite series has some pretty good deals going on right now, but 55 bucks like I mentioned though, there's lots of SSD sales going on. So right now I'm just looking at SSDs in the 240 gig up to the one terabyte range and sorting them by price per gigabyte. 11 cents per gigabyte is what you're getting as far as the deal on that 480 gig team drive. But you can get anywhere in the 11 to 15 cents range down here. And you can even get some screaming deals right now on some one gig drives like this ADATA SU650 for 120 bucks. A Samsung 860 Evo for $130, that's another great deals. Well, uh, guys, what I'm going to be doing on Friday when Black Friday actually hits is another follow-up video to this, and that one won't be like, here are builds. I'm just going to look at deals that I find that are really good. So I'll be collecting those. And if you find any, leave them in the comment section down below. Maybe I'll scoop them up to talk about on Friday. Moving on from there, though, we have our graphics card, the GTX 1070 8 gig for the win. This is from AVGA, so it's an aftermarket version of it. $310. Wow, GTX 1070s. Thank you. Finally, it only took like over two years for your prices to actually get, get good, but I'm glad that they're finally good now. So this is available on Newegg again with a $20 million rebate, $310. So that is the option that I chose for this one, but you should very much be considering, especially with this build, uh, GPU upgrades. So for instance, on PC Part Picker, I'm just looking at 1070s, 1070Ti's, and 1080s. I would include 1080Ti's, but stock on those has gone away, so they're really overpriced. But uh, 1070 you can get for $310. Entry level 1070 Ti, 
40 bucks more for $350. So if you got 40 more bucks, uh, that's a nice upgrade right there. And finally, entry level for our 1080 uh, is a little, little disappointing at $440. I feel like uh, if you guys keep an eye out in the next day or two, these are going to be going for 400 that's my expectation. So keep an eye out for those as well. For now, I think the best bang for your buck in this range of graphics cards is going to be a 1070 or a 1070 Ti. Beyond that, though, we've got a power supply, and here I've upgraded to an 80 plus gold rated power supply. Uh, I would normally have jumped up to a 650 watt, but if you can get a 750 watt for the same price, then you might as well. Still 80 plus gold, $50. Uh, this is a really solid Seasonic unit. Seasonic makes really good power supplies. And again, it, it meets all the criteria of all black cables. Uh, it's partially modular and 80 plus gold is kind of the big upgrade here. So for 50 bucks, I think that's a really solid deal. And there you have it for my rundown of the just under $1,100 build here, featuring, of course, the 8700K. And this system, I think, again, has the most potential for upgrades. So if you wanted to tack on uh, 40 bucks or 100 bucks, upgrading the graphics card in this system, it will handle no problem. Uh, but again, if you're looking for bang for the buck, I'd say you can't get too much better than that right now. Final system here is the Black Friday builds full Monty. I don't, I don't know exactly what to call this. I've been talking about PC gaming and the things that make PC gaming desirable, and I think those things include higher refresh rate monitors, so going above 60 hertz, uh, higher resolution, so going above 1080, uh, and then adaptive refresh rate, so G-Sync if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, or FreeSync if you have an AMD graphics card. G-Sync monitors almost always cost 100 to $200 more than FreeSync monitors, so for that reason, and this build, I've gone with a really nice assortment of parts that I think will get you a very nice PC gaming experience all for uh, about $1,250, $1,223 according to the prices right now. So here I've gone with a Ryzen 5 2600 uh, and this is $160. This is uh, versus the 1700X that I used in the second build I talked about. This one will get you a bit higher frequency out of the box. It's two less cores, so it is a trade-off there, although it does come with a heatsink fan included, so all that for $160, a good choice there. Same motherboard, same memory kit, same SSD, same case, same power supply. So the main differences here compared to our $700 build is gonna be uh, the different CPU. Uh, we upgraded the GPU a little bit, and then of course, uh, graphics card and monitor. And for the graphics card, uh, we want a fast, card that's capable of doing 2560 by 1440 and it's got to be an AMD Radeon card so that gives us the Vega 60 Vega 64 or the Vega 56. So right now I'm looking at just Vega 56s and 64s on PC Part Picker and I'm sorting by price and we can find a really good price on a Vega 6 Vega 56 right now. This is over at Newegg and it is $340. You might also note it note that it says get 3 games with purchase for a limited offer as well. So that adds a little bit more bonus too. Uh, you get the free AMD gift that includes the Division 2, Resident Evil 2, and Devil May Cry 5. So this is a fantastic deal for a Vega 56. The one thing you should keep in mind is that it is a reference design. The blower style design, which isn't the best cooler in the game, but um, for 50 or 60 bucks cheaper than any other comparable Vega 56. It's worth going with. You can remove this and add an aftermarket cooler if you want to. There are various solutions for that. Uh, just something I would keep in mind. These aren't terrible by any stretch, but you might consider something for the cooling solution in the future, or just take a second look at this list of graphics cards I'm talking about here and consider maybe like a Vega 64 that you can get for $400, although that's still the blower style fan. Yes, it is. Here we go. You can get an aftermarket uh, cooler design with the Vega 64 for $505. Still get your free games. But again, that's a, that's a pretty big jump up over the $340 price. So I guess that is really kind of what you have to do sometimes when you find a great bargain like that. And maybe that's why they're selling that for so cheaply. Then lastly is going to be the monitor. So uh, using PC part picker again, just looking at 2560 by 1440 resolution. And I have turned on the tick, the tick box here for free sync support, sort them by price. And you can find again, some pretty good deals. Here's an AOC model. It is a 31.5 inch monitor, which is a really nice size. That's, that's quite large. Uh, reviews on this are quite good as well. So you do get free sync, uh, refresh rate goes up to 75 Hertz and it's got a very large size and the price is quite reasonable there, but you're not getting the full range. I think of like gaming at the high refresh rate with this, this would be a nice in between and also a good bang for the buck choice. So I'll link it in the video description, but the one I actually chose to go with this build is this ViewSonic model. It's still 31.5 inches, 2560 by 1440. Uh, it's about a hundred bucks more 
so uh, you are paying more, but it does have a much higher refresh rate. So refresh rate on this one goes up to 144 hertz. So this would be my pick to get you kind of all of the bonus features that you'd want to have with PC gaming. High refresh rate, higher resolution, but not necessarily requiring the graphics horsepower that you'd need to push a 4K monitor. Uh, and then of course, free sync and, and all that good stuff. But guys, that pretty much is gonna wrap it up for this video. So uh, I wanna say a big thank you for watching and I will post links to as much of this stuff as I possibly can down in the description below. I will be coming back with another video on Friday talking about some Black Friday deals, uh, more content coming up through the weekend as well. So hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more of those videos when they come out. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you.